I'll tell you, another mayor that's having a bit of an interesting time at the moment, um, but not perhaps as interesting as Craig Little and perhaps not as traumatic. But nevertheless, it's not nice um, being on the front page of the paper for nothing you've done wrong, um, is the new mayor of Gore, Ben Bell. Ben, good afternoon to you. It's been a very interesting three months, hasn't it? Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, definitely has been. Um, but it was always going to be with, with the youngest mayor in the country coming to town. Well, it wasn't just that, was it? It was that you tipped out the incumbent and you won by eight votes and you were 23 and sort of a stranger and he'd been there for, God, 23 years. And, um, yeah, it... it, it, it is there a feeling, do you think, that the city is, or the town is split, or have people actually moved on now? I feel like people have moved on. Um, it's, it's very different this year. You know, staff's had a good break, come back nice and fresh. Um, we've had one small council meeting. Councils seem to be come back fresh, so we're really cracking on with the job this year. Um, and that, that period of change was always going to be a long one, um, with the incumbent being in for so long. You know, none of my councils have ever experienced the change in mayor. Um, but I, I feel like we're, we're finally getting to the end of that. Yeah, well, and, and uh, I imagine most people in Gore would want you to be as well. Now, the most recent incident, though, um, the suggestion of duty politics and things like that, and most of New Zealand won't know, oh, that's not true, actually. It ended up being published in the New Zealand Herald as well. Um, is, is, was discovered by, what, by journalists under the Official Information Act. Is, is that right? Yes, yes, somewhat. I mean, um, some emails led to some investigative journalism, which has obviously led to ah. a story, in my opinion, I don't think was much of a story, but um, obviously the public think otherwise. N well, I, actually, I don't think the public think otherwise. It's the journalists think otherwise who cover the story, isn't it? Yeah, could, could be. Someone, someone thinks otherwise. Well, yeah, well that's, <laughs> that's true. That's on the front page. Yeah. Well, um, just to express, uh, what happened was that during the election campaign, um, the person who was involved in running the publicity and promotions for the incumbent mayor, Tracy Hicks, decided to have a, a shot at your private life and decided to draw the attention of other media outlets to your private life. Yeah, that's right? Yeah, yeah, that would be about right. In the hope of get them getting them, what, to inquire into your private life for the intent and purpose of embarrassing you prior to the election. I under If I got that right, is that roughly what you understand to have occurred? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't particularly understand the intent um, other than what's in the article itself. Um, but yeah, that, that would be more or less correct, yeah. Yeah, because of course you weren't privy to those emails. You only you only found out about them, what, when the um, when the media contacted you, is that correct? Uh, no, so the, the email that kicked off um, this entire saga was between me and a counsellor. Um, oh, okay. Counsellor discussing rumours that he had heard. And me basically saying I've heard all sorts of rumours from, you know, photos being leaked of me to my sexuality to, to all sorts of things. Um, and then that was picked up in the OIA and, and the investigation kind of started after that. If you were gay, Ben, would that have made any difference to the election result? I don't think so. Or at least I would hope not. No. So, but that was the intent, wasn't it, of the, um, of, of, you, you were showing, listen, I, Honestly, I went to boarding school. Um, so there'll be plenty of photos of me compromising positions with a series of my hostel mates, I've got to be honest with you. Probably a lot. You, you, were, <laughs> you were shown being, you were shown being um, kissed on the cheek by a male. Um, this was meant to have caused those sorts of rumours. Is that correct? Basically, yeah. I mean, I guess the intention was to... Yeah, comment on my sexuality, but I, a kiss on the cheek is... Odd kind of being told by other people I would imagine is harmless um, and doesn't doesn't lead to you being being gay by any chance but hey that's that's the the angle it was taken I guess so yeah I, I mean it was and obviously the people who circulated that photo intended um, that your private life be part of the um, campaign um, your sexuality is your sexuality your private life is your private life at what stage do private lives, do you think, ever become part of the public lottery? 
That's a really good question. I, I feel like most of my private life is public now. Um, it just comes with the role, uh, especially with the amount of media attention. Um, and I'm, I'm more than happy for you know my public life to kind of my private life um, to somewhat be out there in the public eye. Um, it's when it's used in kind of a harmful or hurtful way. Um, not much to me, water off a duck's back for me, but there are people out there who are dealing with their sexuality that kind of will be offended and a bit upset by um, tactics like this. So the suggestion would be that being homosexual is a negative thing. So, and that, that, that was the link. So it's negative homosexuality. If somebody's homosexual, then that's a negative thing. Let's portray this negatively as an attack weapon um, during an election campaign, yeah? It could be it could be seen that way. I mean, I can't comment on the in, intent um, per se, um, but that's yes, yeah, surely how it's come across in articles. Sure. Um, I guess the next thing is uh, it's, uh, I had to deal with as well. Interestingly, as a mayor, in fact, I had my private life ruthlessly exposed by one um, news media organisation. Does um, we're dealing in a different environment now where it seems that anybody that's in the public eye, including yourself being the youngest mayor of New Zealand, um, which attracts sort of more national than local attention as well. Um, do you think that's fair though? Do you think po politicians are entitled to a private life? It's what they do in the exercise of their public duties really that that's all that matters. It's... Uh it's a, it's a little bit of in between, right? Of so yes, I, I I agree that um, politicians should have a, a private life, but at the end of the day, they do have to understand that they're a public figure. Um, people take photos and post them. As I said to the the original reporter, um, I am a, in a unique position of one of those younger people who has have their had their entire life documented. So you know, there's there's photos of me digitally um, all the way through my life. Um, which a lot of those older politicians don't have. Um, so it's, it's a lot easier for photos to be surfaced and circulated, um, and that will become the, the new age as, as you know, politicians get older or Can younger. I, I mean, <laughs> one of the things that strikes me, though, uh, and this is, is you can certainly turn a negative into a, a resounding positive, it, it would seem to be, it seems to me, that um, you could play a leadership role, um, in, in dealing with particularly younger people, your own age group around this issue, couldn't you? Particularly in a place like Gore, which has a history of conservatism, which may not necessarily, as a history of conservatism, which may not necessarily be the case in 2023. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, this is where I get into having to, to front these things um, and not shy away from them. Um, I've seen plenty of comments, um, especially during some of the other media at the end of last year, of comments like, this is why young people don't get into politics. Um, and that really resonates with me in terms of showing young people that, yeah, they, you might get some stuff thrown your way, but ultimately you just got to push through with it and, and get on with the job. Um, and, you know, if, if you're qualified and you get elected in, um, then you've, you've got to represent your community regardless. Yeah, well, can I also tell you from personal experience, there are a lot of mayors who have gone through what you're going through, Ben. Maybe not with their sexuality, but in terms of their private lives being exposed um, or attacked. Uh, and there are people that in local government and as mayors, you've automatically created enemies and there's almost nothing you can do about them. They will hate you. A hundred percent. You know, because yep. you're one. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, and that's, that's how, I mean, that's how elections work, right? That's how democracy works. Um, people, people prefer other people. Um, but ultimately, I know in my heart that I've got the, the majority in the community um, and, and that's who I have to serve for. Mate, you've been given a mandate. You said, these are the things I'm going to do um, if I get elected. Um, and that's your mandate. Off you go. And in three years' exactly. time, they'll judge you against whether how many of those things you've managed to tick off or not. 100%. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. Um, all right, now, uh, what are your big... Oh, listen, I asked this question of Nobby yesterday, your mate down in um, Invercargill. Um, three Waters and Local Governance Review. We've just talked about Local Governance Review this morning. None of my listeners would have been aware of what the Local Governance Review was. Um, we've just sat down. God, it's just bollocks, bollocks, and more bollocks as far as I'm concerned. Have you <laughs> um, had a look at it at all? And is your council going to be saying anything to that... Um, 
that that group have produced that review? So this is future for local government. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Uh, that one's that one's a tough one. I mean, really, really on the fence about it. Um, although we've been told by all political parties that it won't be shelved, um, regardless of who gets in, um, there is that real. Uh, nervousness amongst local government that you're going to put it on this work to do submissions. Um, it's going to get to central government and they're just going to put it on a shelf um, to be forgotten about. So we're under the pump at the moment um, from, from three waters to RMA reform. Um, so putting in yet another submission, they might not go anywhere. Um, is a really tough decision to make at this point. Yeah, no, we've got the same problem as well. I mean, you've only got a limited amount of resources. And the other thing about this future for local government, this local government review that's underway, um, it, it doesn't seem like it's going to lead anywhere. You're too young to remember this, this but the last time local government was organised in New Zealand, the government of, uh, uh, commissioned a guy called Brian Elwood, who was the former Mayor of Palmerston North, to write a review and suggest the future of local government in New Zealand. From that, local government reform happened and the very first elections under that were, I think, 1989. So, no, 1986. So, uh, no, it was 1989, sorry. Um, until you get that systemic review that leads to legislation, you're not going to take it too seriously, are you? No, there's a massive process and in, in doing it in an election year as well is, is highly topical around, yeah, well... None of the political parties are going to particularly put a policy around it or or hold true to it. So it's just it's, there's the opinion that it's going to get lost in the noise. Yep, there's some definitely some comments around that document in particular around uh, amalgamating anything. Well, they they don't use the word amalgamation, but joining forces um, with councils that have a population of around a hundred thousand. Yeah, that doesn't work for Southland. No, um, doesn't work for my district. Um, and so there's some, there's some big thinking that needs to be done, and it would be a shame to do that big thinking for it to lead nowhere. You're in Gore. What's the population of Gore or your district council? Uh, 13,000 we've got here. You see, that's quite small. Um, and then mm -hmm. you've got on your border, I think, the Clutha district council as well. Um, and then mm -hmm. you've got south of you Invercargill City Council then you've got the Southland District Council I, I think that's right and then I've, you've also got the Environment Southland as well can I ask the obvious question you've got four chief executives um, you've got four mm -hmm. senior management structures um, you've got four different probably consent and um, contracting um, um, processes isn't there some synergy to be gained between the four of you and how you approach the world Absolutely, um, but we also work quite closely together as well, and I think that goes probably unsung quite a bit. Um, you know, we do share resources where appropriate um, and do work together. But yeah, I totally hear you. Um, but with that future local government document in particular, even if we amalgamated with the likes of Clutha and Southland District, which would take a, a, over a massive area of the Southland area, um, it still wouldn't particularly add up to, to that golden number of 100,000 people. Um, and you'd you'd have a, a massive area land mass that you'd have to cover for, for one council. Mm. My issues are very different to those of, of Southland, are very different to those of Clutha. No, um, I understand that, but it's just so, that you're just thinking one ID yeah. system, you know, one one payroll, you know, simple bread and butter stuff that you could you actually save money. Iowa, to be perfectly honest with you, we all spend too much money on local government on bloody chief executives and senior managers. Boy, it'd be great to cull some of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and but yeah, we do we do share services like IT and, and payroll and things. They, oh, you they, do, do you? We meet regularly between councils. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so staff definitely talk between councils and um, learn how we can streamline things. But yeah, it, it can be that question of um, too many chiefs and enough Indians um, as well, and that's that's what would be really good to dig into that stuff with future for local government. But mm. without the backing of central government, it's really hard to lead that change. Yep. All right. Um, ben, thank you very much. I wish you well for this year um, and have a good Waitangi week. Oh, what are you doing on Waitangi Day? Sleeping? I am going over to <laughs> going over to Dunedin for the Waitangi Day Festival, oh, I believe. God, I see that's, you know, your poor buggy. It could be just turning over and there you are. All right, have a good one, mate. Yeah, Look. no, part the job. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. Look after yourself. Yeah, you too. Catch ya. Okay, Ben. Ta. All right, it's um, Ben Bell, Mayor of Gore. Um, there you go.
See? Um, all this came out after the election. Um, private lives of people you hate. I've always hated. 